Hi, this is Pam, Pam Agropi Art, and today I'm going to show you how I painted these apples. There's one, and there's, there's one. So I have my demo piece here, and let me make sure we're in focus. And the brushes that I'm using come from the Donna Dewberry 10 pack. Fine. So I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch flat the 12 inch flat, the 10 inch flat, and the number two script liner. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use all of these in this. The three quarter inch flat I am going to use to undercoat. Now I'm going to start with a white. Now why am I going to start with a white? Because yellow and red are not very opaque, the undercolor would show through and lessen the intensity or brightness of the color. And I really want that brightness. So I'm going to undercoat with wicker white. I could have started on a white surface, um, but I just kind of wanted to show you how undercoating really helps. Now, this one is going to be to the background. So I'm going to undercoat this one, but leave this one with the gray background. And that will push it to the back because of it being dulled down. So I just follow the outline. I am not perfect with following outlines. This is just to get the general shape, and if you didn't even want to use the outline, you could kind of draw in an apple shape with your paint and brush. I'll have this pattern available for you so you don't have to kind of wing it. I know some people find that very helpful when they're just getting started painting. So there is that color undercoated with wicker white. This is plaid folk art wicker white. So that's my favorite white to go to white in all of them. Some people like titanium white. Uh, the, uh, the wicker seems to give me a bit, a bit a little bit better coverage. All right, so that, that, that is undercoated. I'm rinsing my brush out, drying it on a towel. You see it's not completely clean, doesn't matter. Um, just getting the most of it out. Now I'm going to undercoat with a golden yellow. That's going to be goldenrod because I want, like I said, that one to be a little bit duller to sit to the back and dulling it down helps it to not take over the shell here. Okay, I've got a goldenrod on my palette. I probably should scoot this over so that my palette shows in Okay, so I'm going to load my brush, slightly damp, and I'm just going to undercoat the apple with the golden color. And just kind of go around the outline of the other one. Not perfect, doesn't matter. It's all going to work out in the end. And as you know, apples aren't perfect either. They're not perfect circles. They got lumps and bumps, etc. So there we've got that undercoated with the golden color. So now I'm going to let that dry and then I can come back and we can start on the next layer. So now I'm going to kind of just come in with a tiny bit of white on my brush. I kind of blend it out. My brush is very damp. And I'm going to make where the little divot was. If you remember, the divot was right here pretty much where it kind of went down and made like a smile. And I'm just going to kind of highlight this area right here. Give it a little highlight. It is pulling up the yellow a little bit, but it's also blending in. So we're highlighting a little bit right around there. And then we'll let that dry so it doesn't pull up anymore. Now, if you wanted to let it dry first, you could come in with glazing medium in white, and that would do the same thing. I really want this to dry so I can undercoat it. I'm going to undercoat it with a little bit brighter yellow. The white's still a little bit tacky, but I want to get moving. So I'm going to use lemon custard for this apple. It's a little bit lighter, brighter yellow. You can see the contrast between the golden yellow and this yellow. And 
and yellow. The apples are not all the same color either. But you see how it's a little bit brighter. So it's going to pull this one forward. And like I said, the white's still a little bit tacky, so it's dragging. But it's all good. Let's get that filled in. And there you have that. And you can kind of fill in a little bit if you want to. Get a little yellow on that one. Put some more golden in there. Don't want it to be too bright. Tone it down. There we go. Alrighty, now let's let that dry just a touch because it's at a tackiness level that it would cause the paint to lift and I want this to have a little bit more coverage. So let me see if I can get a little bit more yellow on there without it lifting. You gotta play it by ear many, many times. Okay, I'm putting the three quarter inch flat brush aside and I'm gonna go with some engine red, I do believe. Let's see how this flies. It's a very red red. I'm gonna take my number 12 and I'm going to, I'm gonna get it on the corner, just kind of work it into my brush here. And I'm gonna kinda do my little, just wherever that little divot was. Just like that. And then I'm going to drag it down into the yellow. You see how that's... Now make sure you follow the shape of the apple. And then along the bottom edge too. Drag and then pull up. You see how it's making the striations? Be careful that it doesn't start to lift. If it starts to lift, then give it a rest. Kind of leave it some of the yellow showing through. You don't want them to meet completely. And if you get a little too much there, add more yellow and kind of blend a highlight spot there where you see that's kind of a bright yellow spot. And uh, get a little bit more water on my brush and put getting a little bit of that red, and I just want it to be faint. So there we go. Coming around the top. Working that in. Working it around. You want some to be lighter than other areas. Okay, be careful of overworking. It's very possible to overdo. So I want this piece over here to be all yellow. So I need this to blend right here. Remember, I'm trying to make it where that center part looks like it's a little hole there, like this where the apple core or the stem is. And never fear, if you mess it up, just paint right over it again with yellow and start again. Now I'm going to do along the top. See how this is pretty watered down. So what I'm going to do is bring this along the top, this streak of red, and I'm going to pull it in. So it looks like it's all going down into that center. Careful not to overwork it. I do have a tendency to do that. 
All right, so there is that part. Now here's where my green is going to come in. I'm going to add just a touch of the green. Just a touch. So you have barely a touch on my, oops, just dipped that on my palette paper. And I, I'm kind of getting a watery brush. And I'm going to just kind of bring this up from the bottom. Give it a hint of green right there. If you need more, reload and give it that green tint. If you get over, over the edge, no sweat, just wipe down your finger. If you need to wipe out your brush, go right ahead because a lot of times it can get contaminated with the colors when it's wet. Now I want to bring that green right up the edge. Now it's just a little too wet, so it's not leaving the green. So I may need to let it dry a little bit or get more green on my brush. That gives it a hint there. Now for the center, I want this to be dark. So I'm going to go in with Thicket. Thicket Green. And you want that divot to really be shadowed. So I have a little bit of the Thicket on my brush. I'm going to work it in, put it down in there, tap it in there, and then I'm going to pull it up. Pull up, pull up, pull up. I need a little bit more because I want it darker. Pull up, pull up, pull up. And you're going the opposite direction where it looks like it's coming out, blooming out. So there you have down here. You want it a little darker right there at the apex. So you just kind of tap in some of the darker green. So step back, take a look. Do you want your apple more red? So you would come in with more red. I would let it dry. That way the red would stick better. Right now it's just kind of melding into the yellow. And we want, I do want a brighter red. I'll again show you the demo piece. Let me bring it back over here. And I can show you how red the apples are. And there's the apples, and you see how much red is on them. Now, I, like I said, I need to let this piece dry before I go in with more red. So I'll be back when this is dry enough, and we will add the red and do the other background apple. Now the surface is all dry. So now I'm going to go in with my number 12 flat, and I've moistened the bristles again because now I'm coming back after it's dried. So of course the paintbrush probably dried and I'm getting some glazing medium. You can do this with water. I like the glazing medium. This is the folk art glazing medium. I also have um, others but this is what I'm using today. I'm just going to work it into my brush and then I'm going to work some of that red and what this does is it makes it a little more transparent so you're putting on a glaze. I want to come along here and you see how it's darker on this corner? It's because that's where I loaded it, worked it in, and I'm coming around this edge. Now I'm not directly over the painting surface because of the camera, but normally it'd be closer so it'd be easy for me just to follow along the edge. And I'm creating that glaze over it. And you see how that creates that red you're looking for? on the apple, but the yellow is still coming through. And it gives it a real pretty color. And I want more red on my entire apple, so I'm just going to kind of bring this down on this. This over here, I want to stay the green. And I probably will come in with some glazing medium and the green to give that. I want it a little more intense. Of a green. I like having the darker along the outside edge. It just accentuates the edge. And you'll notice the red is a little bit darker there too. So it goes from dark and then it lightens up there. And then you just kind of work it in. 
follow the brush strokes that you did before. I'm going to leave that, I want that yellow spark of light right there. So. I want a little bit more red right up to here. I'm turning my brush so it kind of tail ends off right up there. I'm going to cover that. We're all good. I like this little bit of yellow here as a highlight right around the, uh, well, I don't know what you call that little divot where the stem will be. I'm going to do the same with the thicket. I got some glazing medium on my brush. Got some glazing medium on my brush, worked it in, and then put the corner in the thicket. And then I worked it into the brush a little bit. And then I'm going to bring it out of that little divot spot so that you have the shadow there in that. Now, the green along here I did with the citrus. So I'm going to get the citrus out. And I'm going to go into the glazing medium again. I guess I could do it with water for you so you can see how you could do it with water. So, okay, here I've got a wet brush and I'm going into my citrus green and I'm going to work it into the brush just like I did the glazing medium. And I just, I want to make it a glaze. See how it's just a glaze. It's not an opaque color. And I'm glazing along, and if I pick up the red, i got to be careful not to pick up the red onto my brush. But there is that bit of green on there. And it may be a little too much, so I'm going to go back in my reds and the glazing medium, and I'm going to just pull it up a little bit. There we go. Now when I do that, i got both the green and the red on my brush, so I'm going to have to... Um, wipe it out instead of just keep going over it. And how I do that is I just take a paper towel and I pull the color out of the brush. And then I reload with more of the red and the glazing medium and pull that up. Now I got a little messy right there because I was just flipping up there. And then I want that I pulled that out of my brush again. See if I don't pull it out, you see how I drag that over there? So I wipe between each stroke when I'm trying to clean up a little bit of a mess I made. And you can clean up a mess along the edge too with just your brush after you've wiped it out, if you wish. So, just a few little tricks there. And there I've got, I've got plenty of red in my apple. And I'm going to let that dry before I proceed. Let's go on and do this apple. And that one's gonna be basically the same as this one, as this one. With the red and the green, I'm just gonna think of where my divot is. I could actually go in with a little bit of white. Well, maybe I won't. I'll go in with just the thicket on the corner of my brush, and I'll decide where my divot is. Maybe it's right there. And I can just take this up. I know I haven't done the red yet, but you can see where it's not imperative that you do it in any certain order all the time. I'm wiping out my brush, and oh, let me clean up this up. I don't want that quite. And I wiped out my brush. And I'm going to go into the red. Well, I'm going to go in the glazing medium, and this is cardinal red on the corner of my brush, and I'm going to work it in. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other apple. I'm going to bring that red up. Now you can do this a little less. So that it looks different. A little less red. A little less intense. Already this apple back here is darker because we used the darker yellow, duller yellow. Because we want this to be in the background more. Like I said, I'm a little ways away, so it's hard for me to be precise, but I don't worry about being precise. So it may look messy, but it will all come together. Now 
I started right on with glazing. I had put some of the red in here while that yellow was wet and you saw how hard it was to really get it to show up and that's why I've come back with the glaze. And this time I'm just starting with the glaze which is working just fine. There is two ways you can do it and you can do it with the water as I showed you or you can do it with the glazing medium. Just practice and see what you like. I'm just going to put some red right along here and then drag it down. Now you see I'm making it kind of go along that so it looks like it's a, um, a divot again. Now I'm not going to go all the way down because I want that little bit of yellow showing. And this one I will pull right to the edge so it's not something so obvious. Okay. You don't have to do green here, but I'm going to go ahead and do the green again with the glazing medium and the citrus. And I'm just going to bring it up. Did I get rid of my brush? I might have, but that's okay. It's going to all blend together. So there we got that little touch of green, a little highlight. This isn't melding well, so I'm going to get some of the, I think it was goldenrod. I have to go back and look at my colors. Anyway, I think it was goldenrod was the under color, either that or yellow ochre. And I'm going to put a little bit on my palette. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to pull some of that back up into that red. So it kind of blends. See how that's now blending better? And I'm kind of, I'm sweeping up, ending the brush stroke with the sweeping motion. And I'm getting some red in there because I picked it up and I didn't wipe my brush. So now I wiped my brush out. I'm going to do that again. It's pretty wet. Oh dear, I got into some green and I didn't mean to. Oh, well, I kind of like that look, so we're going to leave it. I wipe my brush out. Okay. Kind of liking that. Uh, I think I want a little more red here. Now do it to the, your satisfaction. This is with glazing medium and the cardinal red again. getting a texture in there that I'm not sure where it's coming from, but I kind of like it. So we're just going to leave it be. Now if you overwork it, you're going to start picking up paint. So there we go. We have that. I got a little more green. I want this to kind of flip this way and this way. Alrighty. So I got a little more yellow on there and was blending it in. Okay. And now when you do the details, like the um, stems, it's just all going to come together. Now no two will look exactly alike, just like no two apples look just exactly alike. But I am going to come in with my liner brush, my number two liner, and some burnt umber, which is a very good basic brown. I'm pretty sure I have burnt, yep, there's burnt umber. And put it on my palette. And I'm just going to pull it up. Sometimes they get wider at the top, so I'm going to make that a little bit wider. It can be shorter 
It doesn't have to go all the way over above the apple. And I'm going to touch it. I have the brown on my brush, but I'm going to have a little bit of the green, and I'm just really going to make a shadow down here where it's coming in or coming out of that divot. Kind of seats it down in there. Now I'm going to, I rinsed my brush out. I'm going to get a little wicker white on my palette after I pick it up off the floor. <sighs> Such a klutz. Okay. White on my palette, not very much because I'm all I'm going to do is go in and mix a little bit with some burnt umber, and we're just going to kind of highlight on that stem, give it a little texture, and it might be too wet. Let me see. I'm just going to do a little thing, divot, smile shape here, upside a U, just to make it have a little, and then just drag in a bit of touch of highlight and the stem. Give it some texture. And there you have your stem. Now you can stop here, do no more, or you can go on and do a little bit of highlighting. It needs to be, this one might be dry enough. I'm just going to give it a tiny bit of highlight. And um, you can do this with a rake brush so you have it really fine, but you can also do it with if you're really careful with your number 12. And I've got some of the blending gel. Is it called blending gel? Or glazing medium. Huh. Don't know. Touch it in your white and kind of blend it into your brush. And then you just kind of make some little sweeping highlights. And you want it to be a real light touch because you don't want them to be stark. And just, you know, kind of like touch along here. More blending, gel, uh, glazing medium. Now this one over here is still wet, so we'll see how these highlights do. You can wait till it's dry. Or you can just put them on there. And that one went over too far. And you want to make it like in the shape of the apple. See, like it's on the top of the apple, so I kind of made it come down following the shape. And the same with up here. You would want it to follow the shape. So if you want this to indicate it's going that way or like this way. Now look, I've got them four places. That's that's not good. That looks kind of phony baloney. So what I'll do is I'll wipe out my brush. I'm not washing it, just wiping it out. A little bit of glazing medium, tiny bit of the red, and I'll just go over that one. And it just kind of blends it in. These have hard edges here. I want to soften these edges so that they're not so hard. So there we go with that. Now, we want to put a few fly specks on it. It's also called fly specks or um, some speckling. So I do that. I love to do that with a toothbrush or a fan brush. I have an old toothbrush that I prefer, and I will grab that. This could be really messy because I prefer using my thumb, and then it gets under my thumbnail, but I'm going to do the end of a paintbrush. Let me see. So I have an old paintbrush, and I'm going to get it. Maybe I'll get some yellow ochre so it has a little more color in it, darker, darkness, and I'm going to kind of work my brush into it. Now it's pretty liquidy, and you want to test it over on another piece of paper. Like I'll test and see right here how big a specs it's laying down. Okay, so then you're going to go like this. Carefully, you don't want too many. I don't know if you can see those. I can see them right here. You want them to be faint. They're, a, they're a, a detail that is not too stark, and you want the smaller little specks. I don't know if you can see those. Let me do them in a darker color just in case they're not showing up. On the little screen, I can't tell, but they may very well be showing up. And I wouldn't normally do them in the burnt umber. 
but I'm just doing it so it shows up for you. It's a little too wet, so it's leaving larger specks than I want. So there you have the specking. And I'll rinse out that. I'll pick this up with this paintbrush. Oops, got my finger in the yellow. Alrighty. Now, normally I wouldn't have, I was trying to really show you, I would make them smaller by having less water in my paint, my toothbrush. Now the fan brush can also do it and you would do the same with the end. You would just flick it from the fan brush. I'm not seeing my fan brush right here because I wasn't planning on using it, but that is basically how you paint these apples. Now you could have left out the green and just left that yellow. You can make it all red. I just give it diversity and each apple is different. Now you notice this has a hard edge here where those are meeting. Now you can work with that until you like it and or go over it. I'm going to go in with a little bit more green and pull it up. See it's not working because that red is dry. So I'm going to go in that and I'm going to change it to red. So it's not going to have a little green there. And that is how you paint. I guess these would be called gala apples, whatever those type are. Um, there's all kinds of apples, all kinds of colors. Play around with your colors and create all the different ones you like. You can do it with all green, and I may do a tutorial on doing all green apples later on if you need a little bit of help. But these are the apples that I'm putting on my box that I'm showing all the fruits that I am painting on them, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 